Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to go about healing crack in glass and uh, why it doesn't work when you just try and put heat straight onto a crack because what happens is as soon as you try and heat up the area you, you think you want to heal you'll always see this happen and there it goes crack just gets away from you and trying to chase it never works never works you always end up making it worse so I'll show you a little trick with uh, how to use your Bunsen burner uh, to solve that problem okay here's an example of something you'd like to repair that's got a little crack in it a uh, little flask here I'm gonna zoom in you can see that there's a little star crack uh, right about there and uh, yeah that's the kind of thing you don't want in a flask if you've got anything that you want to uh, uh, <laughs> make sure survives your reaction um, maybe the flask might implode maybe there's vacuum you want to maintain anyway you'd want to heal that up and you can so rather than just hit it with flame uh, like we were discussing a flame will just probably make things worse although a star crack is actually a kind of example where that might not happen um, the crack is very localized you might be able to get enough heat on that little crack to just melt back in anyway but that's uh, that's really not the best procedure um, we are going to use the technique of the, using the Bunsen to make sure that really doesn't happen and the reason I use a Bunsen, I'm going to zoom in while we do this, um, the reason we use a Bunsen is you want even heat all the way over the crack, all around the glass. Everything has to come up to pretty good temperature. And that way when I do bring the torch back into it and try and melt the glass, it's not going to push the glass open and make the crack get worse. And that's really the reason why Cody's lab failed. Uh, he just didn't warm everything up first. Uh, if you get it up to a high enough temperature, you can get that flame uh, onto the crack and uh, you should be able to make it just disappear. It should just, you should just watch the crack uh, melt back in. And if the glass is clean, then it'll be an invisible, an invisible repair. So let's, um, get this warming and I'll just show you the little torch that I like to use a little Smith mini torch um, they're a great little torch let's fire this up now you don't need you don't need that really sharp hot flame that you'd normally use for maybe other types of glass <laughs> repairs where you really have to heat it up and really melt things in uh, for a star crack all you need to do is just uh, warm the area up and I think we're pretty much warm now it's only fairly thin glass so it would have come up to temperature and uh, let's zoom in and we'll see if this is you can see it just the crack just disappear it just melts it'll just melt back in so I'm going to bring the flame in just nice and gently keeping the, the flame from the Bunsen over the whole area and there it goes, it just melts back in. Gone. Oh, a little bit of a flash there, I'll just, you can still see it. It's amazing, you have to change these small cracks. Uh, good lighting is really important to uh, be able to see if you've done the job right. You might have to turn it around a little bit to catch the light and see if it's worked. I think that is gone now. I can't see anything flashing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So what we'll do... What we'll do now... I don't even know whether it's gone, but uh, it's, it, it has come up with a good clean heel. I can't see that little star crack at all. Now the next thing we're going to do 
is see how much stress we've introduced into that glass by doing that repair. So I'll show you how to make a polarimeter or polariscope as they call. Um, and we'll use polarized light to see if there's uh, stress in that glass. All right, to make our polariscope, we have uh, just need a light source. And uh, I've got a couple of pieces of plastic over the front of that just to diffuse the light and uh, just take the intensity down a bit so the camera doesn't uh, get overexposed and we can see what's, uh, uh, what's actually gonna go on. Um, all right, the next thing you're gonna need is a sheet of polarizing film. Um, this was salvaged from the front of an old LCD monitor. So we just put that in the front. And if you wanna see color, uh, the stress turn up as color, uh, you'll need a, another piece of plastic. So this is just a sheet of polycarbonate and you just put that in front. The other thing that you'll need is a pair of polarizing sunglasses. And you can just look at the stress by uh, seeing the change in polarization like that. But I can't put that on the camera. So what I'm going to do is use a sheet of polarizing film and I'm just going to whack that over the front of the lens and we should be able to see if uh, we zoom in a bit yeah I can't actually see any residual stress in that it's all very even so just for by comparison let's um, take this piece here this was just melted and uh, uh, nothing done to it. it hasn't been annealed it's just been melted and you can see that nice bright band there of strong stress so the polariscope is working our crack has been healed and there's no stress in there